We are back with part three of a video where I'm showing off a purchase of 86 coins that I paid $17 for at a uh, recent coin show. These were in a five for a dollar bin and the first, uh, I've, I've uh, divided this into three portions. The first two have been great when you look at a return on value, but it's not because I want to buy these for value. I just like knowing that the coins that I bought were worth what I paid for them. And so uh, let's pick up where we left off. We're going to start this uh, video with a coin from Denmark. Let's uh, zoom in a little bit. Now, I didn't see uh, any silver coins uh, in the bin except for maybe this one. I thought that with the uh, the toning on it, uh, see there's a little bit where it's uh, got a little bit of toning around the edge here. I thought this one has to be silver. But no, it's not silver. This one is just a regular uh, copper nickel coin uh, from Denmark. It is a one krona coin showing uh, King Frederick the Ninth on here. from 1962. This one is KM 851.1 and not silver. Here's a coin from Morocco. At the time uh, they labeled their coins at the very top as Mayroc, M-A-R-O-C. This uh, dates back to a time when their currency was uh, uh, created by the French, so they used the 50 francs on this coin. It's going to be an Arabic date in the center of here that says AM 1371 or uh, AH. Uh, on the Arabic calendar, it's 1371. This one, uh, they also, uh, you can tell it's a coin from Morocco if it says the uh, Empire uh, Cherifian across the top. This one is KM 51. These coins today are in no particular order, just the order that I picked them up when I was first looking at them. Here is a coin from Netherlands that, even though it's a circulating coin, uh, almost has some matte areas to it as if this was supposed to be a proof coin or something. But when we look on here, the area of the shield has kind of a matte look, and if it was in better uncirculated condition, the area around it would uh, appear to be uh, almost... Um, could have been proof like at one point. I'm not sure that it was, but uh, this is what we've got. But this one is a commemorative coin uh, to commemorate the new queen. So they've got the old queen in the background and the new queen in the front. And so the new queen is um, Beatrix, has her name right there. The date this happened is April 30, 1980. And again, this uh, this kind of has a frosted proof look on the portraits in the middle with, uh, I wish it had been mirror-like around the side. And so this is, uh, in this case, the word here is the investiture, or the investure of a new queen. So when a uh, title, uh, someone goes to claim the title that they are now due is the investure. It's not a, a term that I am familiar with as someone in the United States, but I thought that was neat. This is the second coin I have of the series. I also have the one golden. This one, if you didn't notice on the other side, was the two and a half golden from 1980 and the KM 201. So far in these videos, we've had several of these uh, French territory uh, coins. This one is uh, from... 1949 and during that time they showed the lady with the uh, holding the torch in one hand and the cornucope in the other one uh, sitting on a throne that has a couple of lions on it on like that design this one is from uh, Oceania or more properly here the French establishments of Oceania which as I mentioned in the previous videos uh, later became known as French Polynesia that's where you're going to find Tahiti and Bora Bora so there are only four coins that they made, and uh, we may have seen all four of them in this series of videos. And by the way, that one was KM1. During this time, coins from Uruguay uh, had a sun in the middle with a lot of uh, rays coming out from it. Fortunately, this one's a little bit well-worn to see all the detail of that, but it is 1936. Republica Oriental del Uruguay. 
This uh, specific coin is going to be the five centesimos. This one's going to be KM21. Next up, we've got this nice portrait on a coin from Nicaragua from 1946. This one's going to be uh, 25 centavos of a Cordoba, which is their uh, currency. And a lot of the Nicaraguan coins will feature five mountain peaks. And this one has the sun uh, with the rays setting over, uh, I guess, behind them. And so I like how some of these Latin American countries will have uh, actually add a face to the sun. So this uh, coin is a CAM 18.1. And something else to look at on this coin is we have the letters, it's upside down here, BNN for the National Bank of Nicaragua. There is another variant of this coin, which is 18.2, where the letters are BCN for the Central Bank of uh, Nicaragua. Here is a coin in uh, Cyrillic that is not Russian. The country shown here is Serbia. So this is before they became a part of Yugoslavia. Serbia became a country again when Yugoslavia fell apart. But this one is um, before the end of World War II. This one dates back to 1942. Uh, a coin that is black like this, especially during the World War II years, is made out of zinc where it starts off a nice shiny like it's nickel, but doesn't take too long to turn black and then at, when it corrodes a whole lot it turns white. This one is a one dinar and we're going to have more from this uh, series coming up in this video but this one is a KM31 and this comes from a time when Serbia was uh, Germany occupied in World War II. Another French territory that we've seen multiple times. Uh, it, there was a time when I almost never saw coins from St. Pierre and Miquelon, and I picked up three or four just from this one dealer. So this uh, coin was featured in video one of this series. Here is a 50 centimes coin from Haiti. We've seen a few in this series. Again, with the, uh, the tree, the cannons, the flags in the background, the banner uh, that goes across the bottom, and the French words around the edge that are... Uh, listed here, I guess, uh, Liberty, Egality, and Fraternity. Then on the front, we have the uh, the ruler of the time. So this one is 1908 and is uh, President Nord Alexis. KM56. First Queen Elizabeth coin of this video. This one comes from a... Uh, the British Caribbean Territories, Eastern Group. Later, that was the East Caribbean Territories. And I think the 50 cents coin is probably the fanciest uh, by far of the entire uh, run of coins that they've made for that uh, series of uh, islands. So uh, we've got a lot going on here. We've got the, uh, I guess, the ruler of the sea holding a trident, a couple of uh, heads of horses on there. And then below that, we have several shields and then a sailboat. Uh, with its own motto around it so that those words are so tiny and well worn that i can't read it but uh, a lot going on on this 50 cents coin from 1955. this one is uh, km7 here's a coin from uh, bulgaria that um, is between the world wars and feature some imagery that we'll see on some modern Bulgarian coins. They are another country that uses Cyrillic outside of Russia. And uh, I believe this is a uh, well-worn scene of a, uh, uh, of a uh, soldier or knight on horseback uh, who has cast a spear into a lion. So some uh, brave warrior uh, featured on here. Uh, this design is easier to see on some of their modern coins. I think we have the date of 814 must be the creation of Bulgaria. I'm not completely sure about that, but we see that date on a lot of other Bulgarian coins. This one is uh, the 5 Liba coin from 1930. 
This one is uh, KM39. And uh, this one has, I've got some notes on this one of, uh, this one is made of copper nickel, but uh, there must be some iron and steel on the inside of it as well. Here's a coin made by Portugal for Portugal and not for another uh, one of the territories they control. This one is 20 centavos, dated back to 1924, but it has quite a simple design on the other side, just showing uh, pretty much but nothing but the, the, uh, the face of the lady featured here. We had a, in the last video, we had a coin of four uh, centavos, and that one uh, had a very similar design on it, although that coin only lasted a couple of years. But this was about uh, from a similar time. This one's going to be KM. 574 and this coin books for three dollars here's a coin from the philippines that i usually find uh, very well worn but being the 50 centavos it's larger than most and this one is not uh, that well worn where we can actually see the details we have a lady there standing in the middle she has a, a hammer on an anvil and in the background we have a volcano with multiple smoke rings there is a version of a variation with, I think, the 25 centavos where there is a different number of smoke rings on it. I don't think that happens with the 50. This one's going to be from 1958, and this was, uh, the Philippines no longer had America make their coins at this time. So, uh, KM190. Here is a uh, well-worn World War I coin from Germany uh, made out of iron. This is a tin fennig coin from 1917. Uh, if I hold it that way, I guess we can see the details a little bit better. This one's going to be KM20. And then here on this side, we've got the uh, eagle, which is uh, seen on a lot of German coins from about this time. Here is a coin from Luxembourg. We saw a coin very similar to this in the last video. <clears throat> I actually spell their country Luxembourg here instead of Letzburg. And we've got the, uh, the uh, stand-up fighting lion with the crown above it. When we flip it over on the last video from 1937, it was very similar to this for the 25 centimes, except that one abbreviated centimes as... CTS, but here we have centimes abbreviated as CMES, and so that makes it a different coin. So we've got uh, KM42A. The A means that this coin is made of copper nickel, but uh, at another time there was a uh, version of this coin made out of bronze. I ended up with several uh, duplicates of the uh, the French territory coins, another uh, aluminum coin, another one from the uh, French Equatorial Africa, one franc. So uh, showing an African animal with long horns on the back of this one franc coin. I think this one was in the first video. Here we have a coin. Anytime you see the lion holding a sword, sword like this one, uh, look at Sri Lanka in your catalog, but this one is actually before it was Sri Lanka. This one was when it was still Ceylon, and so not sure when the switchover happened or when they were no longer part of uh, Britain, but uh, the uh, king or the queen is not featured on this one cent coin from 1965, and it's made of aluminum. This one is KM127. We've got another coin from Bulgaria that has a similar uh, features to uh, the previous Bulgarian coin on this side, unfortunately just as well worn. And when we flip this one over, the major difference is, well, it is larger, but this one is the five, I mean the 10 Leva coin when the last one was five. Uh, same year, 1930. This one is a KM40. 
I uh, picked up two of these by mistake, but we've got the next uh, coin from Serbia. Uh, same year as the last one, where we've had the uh, one dinar, but this is the two dinar. And we have a uh, pretty much the uh, this side looks exactly the same. It is a larger coin, of course, uh, coin of course. But uh, I was talking about earlier when zinc coins turn white when they corrode. This one, if you ha have it in the light just right, seems to have a little bit of a shine to it. So when you hold it like that, it looks uh, like it has a little bit of corrosion. But uh, a zinc coin with that kind of shine when you hold it in the right, uh, I think that makes that one the better coin. So. Let's see, these are from uh, 1942, KM number 32. Do want to point out at the bottom, we have the mint mark for Budapest, the two characters right there. This is uh, perhaps the smallest coin from the entire lot. So the smallest coin from the entire uh, three-part video series here. But it's also in fairly nice condition. It's a one-half cent. And when we flip it over, it is, which side is up? This side is up. It's also uh, one of the oldest coins from this series, from the Netherlands, 1878. Usually when I find these coins, they are in much worse detail. But you can actually see a lot of the details of the lion on here, as well as the lines in the background. So I suspect that when it comes to a lot of these old coins, these got lost a lot more than the, the full one cent coins. You might not believe it, but this is the most valuable coin in the price guide of the entire series. This coin, in this condition... Uh, being this old is worth $15, which is about what I paid for the entire set. I would not have paid $15 for this coin, but when I found it, I knew right away that it was um, probably going to be one of the better ones that uh, I was picking up. Here is a circulating commemorative coin of Mikolai Kopernik. This coin is from Poland. It's a Tinslotic coin from 1959. It's going to be KM51. There is a 51A version of this coin, which is a slightly reduced side, uh, uh, yeah, reduced sized version of the coin. So we've got the Polish eagle uh, showing up on this side. This is the second East Africa 10 cent coin uh, shown in this series. This one is from 1956. The older, the other one was older and mentioned uh, George VI as the ruler, but this one's Queen Elizabeth. This one's going to be KM38. Here is a British-controlled area that still used the pre-decimal system, just like uh, Britain was using at the time. So it does feature Queen Elizabeth II on this side. When we flip it over, it's going to be a New Zealand sixpence from 1959. This one is KM26.2. And uh, so it's the point two is uh, based on uh, the point two. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell here with it being well-worn, but you probably would have seen it better before as well-worn, but they added a shoulder strap to the queen on this one where older versions of the coins did not have that. And I think that's something that I've seen on some Canadian coins from around the same time. Here is a coin from Panama from 1916 in a denomination that did not last very long. It is the two and a half centesimos of a Balboa. So, of course, uh, we would not, uh, as, as people in the U.S., we would not find this very easy to work with, being a uh, what we would call a half a nickel. But uh, I guess uh, they wanted to try that out for a while. They even had a one and a quarter 
which was half of this. Uh, that one certainly didn't last for very long. But this coin is from 1916, and it's KM 7.2. Uh, the 0.1 version of this coin had the uh, Medeo uh, word right here had an S on the end of it, so they made it a plural. So they removed that S for this version. Second coin from Uruguay in this video uh, from the same time, uh, again features the sun and rays on this sign. That last one I think was the five, and this one is the two centesimos. This one's going to be uh, KM20. Here is a coin from Portuguese controlled Angola. We had one very similar to this in the last video where it adds the words Colonia de Angola, which celebrated the 300th anniversary of the founding of Angola, or at least the colonization there. So they added the words Colonia just for this one year. But here's the side where we can see that it is uh, controlled by Portugal with the 10 centavos. That other coin in the last video was 20 centavos. This one is KM70. And this coin has a book value of $3. Here's another uh, place ruled by Britain featuring George VI. We saw another version of this coin that was very similar in a previous video. I think some of the Latin words on this side have changed. They're uh, just going from memory. I think there's fewer words here. But this one's going to be another coin from East Africa of a one shilling coin. This one's from 1950. And again, I like how they have the lion in front of the mountain on this coin. This one is KM31. Here's another coin that is not silver. This one is from Pakistan from 1948. And again, it has the uh, Ottoman Empire uh, symbol taking up the middle of this coin. This one is going to be a full one rupee coin. We had a quarter rupee in a previous video. This coin books for $2 and is catalog number KM7. This is our uh, final coin from this series. It's going to be from Ghana from 1958. This one is KM5. And I'm going to have trouble with the name there, Kwame... Nakruma, I suppose. From the year 1958. Well, we've now finished uh, looking at all of the coins that were in this uh, series. Uh, like I said earlier, these are all from one dealer, one booth at a coin show that uh, I visited in uh, May of uh, 2023, and uh, there's a lot of good stuff here. I um, paid $17 for this entire pile. Uh, there were 42 new coins from my collection, and it is hard for me to get an infusion of that new, uh, number of new coins when I'm trying to get a pretty much a typeset of every uh, coin from every country. It's uh, when you, after you've been collecting for a couple of decades, that gets harder and harder to do. So to pick up this many new coins from my collection uh, is I, a big win for me. Now, I like adding up the book value of everything just for fun. I have no intention of trying to sell these, uh, become my own dealer. Uh, short of, I do have some eBay auctions that I make periodically. Probably hope to have some uh, sometime in the summer. Uh, where a couple of the duplicates out of here are probably going to be in those lots, uh, but uh, I like adding up the value as I go. So the complete value of coins in this vi that were featured that I uh, showed off individually uh, in this video, let me just do some quick math in my head, it's going to be about $38.60 and uh, 60 cents was the book value of everything we looked at today. But when you add up the book value of everything in the pile, it's $118.10. So the average coin in this pile has a book value of over a dollar. Now, when you get one that's $15, that kind of skews it a little bit when you throw in all the coins that are worth 10 cents or a quarter. But um, I'm just uh, glad to know that I'm picking up things that have uh, some book value to them. 
All right, thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this kind of content, I make a lot of videos just like this one, and I'm going to link the Foreign Coin Showcase playlist here at the very end. Thanks for watching. Bye.